Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Brian and Jack with Men's Comics. And like we always do, we're here to kick off that week for you with comics. We love talking comics. And the best thing to do to kick off the week is we're talking about those top 10 back issues for you to be on the lookout for. Right, Jack? That's right. And we've got another great list with some excellent picks. We've got some heavy hitters that people are talking about, but we've got a few sleepers that nobody is paying attention to right now. Yes. And I feel it's important to bring this up again because every time we post this on social, every time we post this on Instagram, people are like, hold off, they're going to drop in value. This isn't that type of list. We're not giving you 10 picks that have peaked in value. All those lists that do that, they have their purpose. That's not our purpose. We're giving you 10 books to be on the lookout for that go in your collection at any given time. We think now is a perfect opportunity to pick those up. Minus a few that are up there in value, but still we think have a lot of room to grow, right? That's right. And even on this list, there's a couple books that we may even tell you that right now is not the time to buy them, but you should put them on your buy list and start paying attention because the spec cycle comes around. Right. So enough talk, talk, talky talk. Let's get into it with number 10. And kicking off the list this week at number 10, we have Shadow Man, number one, 1992, which is important because we all know a new Shadow Man series is coming, right? That's right. Shadow Man is coming back from Valiant Comics. Um, Shadow Man is my favorite Valiant Comics character. There's a lot of talk right now about Valiant with the upcoming Harbinger talk of a movie coming in 2021. Um, Sony was pretty happy with what Bloodshot did. It was number one on video on demand for a number of weeks. Um, they kind of look at the failings of the movie to be mostly related to the pandemic. Um, at the same point, I think Shadow Man is a character you got to kind of zig while others are zagging, right? Everybody's buying up Harbinger books. Um, I think Shadow Man brings in a horror element that it really, really could be successful um, on the big screen, and especially with an African American lead character. Uh, a lot of people pay attention to the first appearance of the of the character Jack Boniface. Um, we're not talking about that. We're talking about Shadow Man number one here from the first volume, which is the first appearance of the actual character, Shadow Man, again, using that logic similar to Venom versus Eddie Brock or, or Carnage versus Cleese Cassidy. You want the character, not the man behind the character. So Shadow Man, number one from 1992, with that being said, is actually undervalued. Coming in at number nine, we're keeping it with Shadow Man and we're going with Shadow Man number 13, but this is from the 2014 series, right? All right, and here's the thing. I'm, I'm more bullish about Shadow Man than most of the other Valiant characters because of what was done with Shadow Man under the Dinesh Shandasani Valiant reboot. Um, and here you get kind of a glimpse of that. Issue number 13 introduced us to a new character, Punk Mambo. Punk Mambo took the world by storm. This 1 and 50 variant for this book by Pen Te Ben Templesmith is an absolute ghost. I mean, multiple hundreds of dollars. If you're not familiar with Valiant back issues, it is a absolute winner. But cover A, which wasn't really an attractive cover because it was similar to uh, when a lot of publishers kick off new arts, uh, arcs, they kind of put some extra trade dress, really trying to sell things. Um, not the most attractive cover A, but it was a, a killer back issue because, again, first appearance of Punk Mambo. Punk Mambo, a female character, a badass, um, kind of brings in, again, horror, voodoo um, culture kind of into uh, the value universe with a real punk rock aesthetic. And she kind of became, for lack of a better comparison, Valiant's Harley Quinn. And that certainly drew attention to the first appearance. But cover A has started to lag some. And we know just like we're getting a new Shadow Man series in 2021, we are also getting a new Punk Mambo series. I think these are two characters to pay attention to as Sony looks to expand the Valiant film universe. I think they can carve out a nice niche for themselves in the kind of horror genre. And here's the great part about it is you're playing so ahead of the game. These books are massively undervalued what they could and should be sitting at. Yeah, every time you mention Shadow Man, you know, I'm a big Disney fan, so I keep thinking of the bad guy from Princess and the Frog, which I know is not the same thing. Hitting us at that number eight spot, we get those Craven Last Hunt issues. We also know there's also a Sony movie coming out for this, right? 
Yeah, there's a lot of talk of it, at least. And certainly we got some confirmation from Sony about some other stuff that there's been talk of for a couple of years. So at this point, I think where there's smoke, there's fire. We're going to end up getting a Craven movie, whether we get a Craven solo movie or whether it's a Craven driven uh, Spider-Man film. Either way, Craven's last hunt is coming. I can't imagine them, them doing Craven without getting into this storyline. And even if they don't, um, this also falls under that trend that we've talked about regularly, Brian, on the show of Classic is Classic. I mean, this is just, this is one of those uh, seminal kind of Spider-Man stories. Uh, amazing, iconic cover art throughout this run. Some excellent Todd McFarlane stuff. Um, definitely, definitely a, a set to put together. Um, definitely a trade to go back and get. You can get kind of reprinted trades of this real cheap. as cheap as like 10 bucks. Um, especially if you go used on Amazon, you could probably find sub $10. Uh, but great story to read, great covers to collect, but one to pay attention to as we could see a rise in this run um, as some of this movie news trickles out. Sticking within that Spider-Man family, at number seven, we have Amazing Spider-Man number nine from 2014. That's right. Now, this is a book that I think has been talked about, but has long been overlooked its importance and value in the overall scope of all things Spider-Verse. This is the very first in continuity Spider-Verse book. This is where all of these characters that we met in the edge of the Spider-Verse kind of one shots, these kind of ridiculous storylines that were outside of um, you know, the 616 universe who have now converged into the story of Amazing Spider-Man. This kicked off an arc that has now since spawned a movie and it will probably end up spawning a live action film before it's all said and done. Uh, now is the time to get in on this. Um, you've got first appearances in this issue. You've got um, the kickoff of a iconic story arc. I mean, I don't even want to say a major one. I think it's going to be iconic for years and years and years to come. Uh, we've talked about the impact of the, just the animated film on like both of our sets of children. Um, so this is a big one. And there's also a Gabriel Delato 125 variant that, to pay attention to that's actually a connecting variant for each of the next issues within this arc. And I think that entire set is going to be one to be on the lookout for. Now these next two books on the list we talked about at the beginning of this video, there were a few books that were kind of up there in price, but we felt still had some, some meat on the bone. And we're coming at number six. We're talking about Brave and the Bold number 25. Yeah, definitely meat on the bone here because when we look at Silver Age Marvel keys, keys of like iconic teams and characters and what those price points go for, we are talking four digits solidly. We're looking at seven, eight hundred dollars for characters in the Bronze Age who have yet to appear in film. Um, and here we are talking about Brave and the Bold Twenty Five, which is the first appearance of the Suicide Squad. And while this may not be the modern Suicide Squad that we see today, which is why everybody chases Legends Number Three. At the same point, this is the first appearance of the Suicide Squad, adorned right there in the cover. Gorgeous book, gorgeous cover. Um, definitely encompasses uh, Silver Age, like war books um, that DC was putting out. But this, this is an amazing book, a key, key back issue. I'm very bullish on James Gunn's ability to get Suicide Squad going in the right direction for the DC Warner Brothers kind of entertainment side of things. Um, and this is just one of those keys that while it may be a higher dollar book because of its age, um, you can still find them raw and mid to low grade at, at affordable prices, all things considered, especially when you look at like what kind of modern popular books like Punchline's first appearance go for. And, and then it's one to keep an eye out for long term because I mean, the, the, they're not making more of these. This is this is a vintage, vintage key. And if there's ever a market correction on a lot of these DC Silver Age keys, you're gonna see a lot of these books spike in value. And for that reason, this isn't the only one we're talking about because next on the list, we're gonna talk about Brave and the Bold 54. So coming, uh, you know, a, a whole 29 issues later, we're getting the first appearance of the Teen Titans. And, you know, Teen Titans, Number one from 1980 has always kind of been that Teen Titans book to look for because, again, it's more the modern Teen Titans. But this is the first time you get these characters, these teenage characters teaming up together. Um, and this has long been credited as the first appearance of Teen Titans. And we've talked on this channel our belief that the Teen Titans 
are for DC, what the X-Men are for Marvel. They just have not been able to get them off the ground in the same way, both on the publishing side as well as on the film side. The Titans TV show is certainly entertaining, but we know the struggles that DC Universe app has had. Hopefully it will get new life in the HBO Max streaming service, but Either way, I don't think that's ultimately the vehicle. We need a Teen Titans movie done properly, uh, properly handling even even the kitschiness of Teen Titans. Because let's face it, they're kids' characters, so there should be some humor. There should be some some kitsch to it. But these are two classic, classic Silver Age vintage first appearances. That while yes, expensive back issues, and that they'll probably cost you two to three hundred dollars, um, depending on what grade you're looking at. They are massively undervalued when you compare them to just Bronze Age books like Blade or or King Dracula or things like that. Yeah, definitely two classic books. Uh, we've been saying it for years, Jack, and I weren't even talking about it before recording here. It seems like for like the past 10 years, we've been talking about how DC Silver Age keys are just so undervalued compared to similar Marvel Silver Age. But either way, not cheap, but still great ones to pick up. And we're going to move on into the next pick. Coming in at number four, we have Go-Go Power Rangers number one. You hear us talk a lot about Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, especially that. This one is almost like their, their teen side of them, right? And the minus the Power Rangers, what goes on in their normal day life, but it's still a great series. Yeah, I like the way they broke down between uh, Power Rangers and uh, Go Go Power Rangers, and that the Power Rangers was everything, like you mentioned, in the costume, all the battle stuff. And, and Go Go Power Rangers was really them outside of the costumes in their day to day life and trying to live with being Power Rangers. Now, that all changed and things got crazy. And now we're spawning into two new books with Mighty Morphin number one and Power Rangers number one, and Go Go Power Rangers is coming to an end. And because of all of that, I think that it, it gives credence to this series because this was a heavily important series. It did a lot to add to the lore of Power Rangers. We got Ranger Slayer out of this series, who is now the new Lord Dracken. Um, and all of this has given a lot of attention now to some of the characters in the series. And one of the characters who's gotten a lot of attention is Matthew Cook, who first appears in this issue. Um, now, there's a lot of speculation surrounding the upcoming debut of a new Green Ranger in issue number 55 of the Mighty Morphin Power Ranger series. And there's been a lot of talk about what character could be taking that uh, mantle. And one of the popular online choices is Matthew Cook, and that has led people to pay attention to this Google Power Rangers number one. But right now, it's really just Power Ranger fans talking about that. And it's speculation. You don't know if, if that's the case. There's also people who have their uh, flags planted in other camps. So you're going to have to wait and see. But this is one of those ones that I think if this was a Marvel spec or a DC spec, people would be talking about it. And because it's a if Power Rangers one, it's flying a little bit more under the radar. But if things come to fruition the way that hardcore Power Ranger fans are claiming that they believe that it will, there should be some attention coming back and being paid on this issue. So now is a great time to pick it up if you can get it for cover price. We are now down to the top three for this week. And coming at number three, we're sticking with Go-Go Power Rangers. But this time, we're talking about all those great music album homage bands. Everyone talks about the Marvel hip-hop. But good thing about the Go-Go Power Rangers is these were incentives, right? Right, so there's a lot to really kind of unpack here. First off, Go Go Power Rangers is not highly printed. So being that a lot of these were one in 25 incentives for a series that wasn't printed um, extremely heavily, when you compare that to an open order Marvel uh, hip hop variant incentives, these are much scarcer. Also, there is credence to the popularity of these beyond just the hip hop variants. If you wanna say, well, there's the hip hop angle there. Well, IDW released uh, years ago, movie or music poster homages that that homaged several kind of iconic moments in music history, from Woodstock and uh, and to Sgt. Pepper to uh, that famous Purple Rain um, GI Joe cover, and those covers are iconic and expensive. And while those were one in ten incentives, we've seen the value of those because they've dried up and they're gone. And I think that is what you are gonna see here. And you're starting to see it now because I've been paying attention to these covers for over a year. Shout out to my man, Gary Neusser, who's another guy. Um, he's got the comic uh, Deconspective. Uh, YouTube channel is definitely one to pay attention to. 
Uh, he's been talking about these for a long time. He's been collecting these and buying these up. And you know, it's one of those things where they're not readily available. They hit on multiple levels of nostalgia. Um, you talked about, you know, you call, you call them music homages because they're truly music homages because they bounce on all genres of music. We've seen things like um, they've got NSYNC. They've got Nirvana. They've got Dr. Dre. They've got the Beastie Boys. Um, you're you're combing all over the place, no doubt. And no doubt, Rita Repulsa. Yeah, the Tragic Kingdom um, homage. I think a lot of these are going to get paid attention to. Um, they really hit you in the '90s nostalgia feels. And then, like we said, you know, lower printed series, one in twenty five incentives, the highest ratio of any of these types of variants out there. If you do a little compulsory search on eBay any individual issue, some of them you won't even find issues available. And then when you do, you may only find a few. And yeah, you'll find some cheap because people aren't putting a lot of value into them right now. But this is the kind of thing that just attention ends up escalating that value. And value can escalate quickly when you're talking about such a small sample size of available copies. Coming in at number two, we talk a lot about Spider-Man. We're talking about a lot of those females in the Spider-Verse, but you always hear about Gwenum. Um, <laughs> You always hear about Spider Gwen or Ghost Spider. You always hear about Silk, but we're going to take it back to the classic. We're going with Spider Woman number one at number two. Yeah, and now we mentioned in the opening that there were some books that I would say don't buy right now. The next two books we're going to talk about, I'm going to tell you don't buy right now because they are going to be spiking harder than you would typically see them. Um, but I still wholeheartedly believe in them long term, and I have no faith in the patience of the comic buying community. So what I know to be true, because I've seen it time and time again, is that while these spikes are happening, people will move on to the next piece of news, the next item that uh, comes across their key collector app alert. And once they do, these issues will start to fall in value, similar to what we've seen with She-Hulk, another property we know for a fact is coming that has a very popular actress attached to it. Now, if you miss the news on Spider-Woman, what we've got been announced is that Olivia Wilde will be uh, directing and starring in a upcoming Spider-Verse female-driven film. That's all the information we have, but most people are led to believe that this will be led by Spider-Woman, and that's who Olivia Wilde will be playing. And Olivia Wilde is one of those actresses that gives uh, major credence and respect to not just the MCU, but the Sony side of things and the Spider-Verse. This takes a property that maybe would have been looked at as like a BC property and kind of elevates it, I think, right off the bat with that initial casting. So that's definitely something to pay attention to. Because of that, I'm very bullish on, Sp on Spider-Woman. I think the fact that these both of these next two issues we're going to talk about are kind of readily available, higher printed issues is a good thing. I think that um, will make them more available and easier to, say, buy up multiples between now and the inevitability of probably three or four years from when you're really coming to fruition on this investment. But because you're looking at a three- or four-year investment, that's why – I would really not stress about these initial price spikes that you're going to see in the next, say, month or so. Um, I would be paying attention maybe three months from now. But again, that's the beauty of this list is this is a living list. If you're putting these books on your list, this is your list to monitor. You know, you're going to see prices go up. You're going to see prices go down. Many books we talked about weeks ago, they were spiking because of media news, and they've already come back down to fruition. This, we're not looking at this in the short term at all. Again, this list is aimed towards the long term. So while these may not be great buying opportunities today, which differs from the majority of the list, they are great buying opportunities in the long term. And this first one here, Spider-Woman number one, um, a lot of people are going to pay attention to the first appearance, which obviously we're going to talk about. But we've talked on the channel previously about these secondary issues, the first issue of an a, of a ongoing title um, by the character's name. When those first appearances get priced out of people's range, these are the issues to go to. Right, which only leads us to number one, which carries right into this. And we're going to talk about that first appearance of Spider-Woman with Marvel Spotlight number 32. Right, the first appearance of Jessica Drew as uh, Spider-Woman. Now, there's also other Spider-Woman uh, out there. Um, certainly, Gwen Stacy as Spider-Gwen was called Spider-Woman at one point. There's also Jessica Carpenter. But this is the one, Jessica Drew, I think, the one to focus on. Uh, black, a black border makes these books tough in, in high grade. Um, this has been a readily available key, $40 to $50 in most back issue bins for the last several years um, in that kind of mid to high grade. 
and certainly seeing spikes now to around $150, which is why we're saying put some pause on it, but pay attention to it because I really got to tell you, I believe in a female driven spider verse. I believe in a spider verse in general. I believe in Olivia Wilde. And I think Sony's got this thing figured out now. So um, be on the lookout for these, these, these spider woman issues, um, start paying attention to them. And certainly let us know it in the comment section. There's a lot of other um, spider woman, spider verse type keys. We could be talking about from black cat to silver sable to jackpot let us know in the comments section what characters you're chasing and when do you think will be the time to buy these jessica drew keys so there you have it guys there's our top 10 back issues to be on the lookout for this week also not just this week but like we always say you can put this in your binder it creates that big master list for books to always be on the lookout for but let us know which of these do you have. We kind of hope when we create this list that you don't have a lot of these because we think they provide a lot of value to your collection. So we're hoping you don't have many of them and it's like something for you to be on the lookout for. But also on supermancomics.com right now, as well as the 616comics.com, we just launched some new exclusive variants, right? We have that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number 110 that just went live for pre-order this past Saturday. Plus this past week, we also had We Only Find Them When They're Dead number one, that John Boy Myers exclusive variant, right? That's right. We told you guys we were going to be coming up with variants. We've got TMNT 110 three cover set available right now. We've got We Only Find Them When They're Dead uh, number one, three cover set available right now. We've got Stargazer number one from Mad Cave Studios version variant available right now. And we've got Draken number one, New Dawn available right now, Seven Secrets number one available right now, and Seven Secrets number one. Second print, four cover set available right now. Simplemanscomics.com, the 616comics.com. We are bringing the variant heat all summer into the winter. With that being said, this is Brian and Jack with Superman's Comics. See you guys in the next video.